Hello. Um, I want to thank everyone for uh, for being online here today, um, and uh, we'll get started here with uh, with uh, uh, the talk and uh, just a little bit of background. Um, the the title of the talks: Virtual Reality and Data Visualization. Uh, this is going to be a, a discussion of some of the things that we've been doing uh, with both looking at virtual reality for science visualization in terms of some tools we're developing, but also kind of our, our student research experience. Um, and I kind of like to break this up and think of it as, uh, to me, this is almost like two talks in one. I've got an aspect that I want to be able to present of what we're doing in terms of educational technology. Uh, the particular tools we're creating and making available via open source, but also kind of our technology education experience. How are we using this process of building these tools as, uh, an, as a way of doing student, uh, student uh, experience, a student research experience? So um, in terms of the educational technology, the, the thing I want to present today is something we've been working on called the Unity Visualization Toolkit. It's an open set of resources for looking at doing 3D visualization of science data in virtual reality. Um, I think a little bit different than uh, so often when I, you know, think of looking at some of these gaming tools used in education, uh, I see a lot of either using them to create games or think about gaming or using them uh, as a virtual reality tool to create a virtual experience. But here what we're trying to do is take the virtual experience that we would want to have as scientists looking at data and do a create tools to, to help make that happen um, and utilize some of the newer technology that's happening and some of the software that's available to, to really do some, some uh, 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 open source uh, 3D virtual reality visualization that allow, that, but, but making use of, of some of the cheaper hardware that's been coming online. Uh, from a technology education point of view, uh, in particular, I want to talk about um, both a high school outreach program that we've been working on with a few years, getting high school students developing this with us, uh, as well as what we've been doing for a freshman and sophomore uh, introductory research experience, uh, where we're looking to kind of get students online very quickly with thinking about technology and programming in particular uh, to help us do this. So um, first off, why Unity? I mean, there's multiple different platforms out there for thinking about virtual reality. Uh, certainly Unity and Unreal have the lion's share of the market for creating virtual reality tools, but there's a lot of uh, other stuff out there as well. Um, and then the other kind of why Unity issue for us is why not just use custom science visualization software? There's a lot of really good tools out there for doing science visualization in kind of 2D and 2.5D um, to, to do very high quality uh, images for publication um, that are that are optimized very well for flat screen. Um, but the software that we find for SciViz, particularly when working with undergrad groups and high school groups, uh, tends to be very specialized. They want to do a very particular thing, uh, or if it's not specialized, uh, the learning curve is, is very steep. Um, I don't want to say poorly documented in the sense of, 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 of saying that it's not documented, but compared to what you would have for, say, uh, uh, a you know triple A product for doing development, the documentation is often uh, a version or two behind. Uh, the cross-platform compatibility isn't always there, and the user base for ScienceVis software is just it's so much smaller than the user base for for, for gaming software. Uh, and then finally, what, what uh, I had been getting very frustrated with with a lot of the ScienceVis software was just really a slow adoption of newer and different hardware, particularly cheaper hardware. Uh, the you know cheap compared to say you know a, a, a you know large 3D projection system or a cave system. So being able to get things into into a, a, an Oculus headset or Gear VR, uh, the adoption was was uh, we found is you know, spotty from one piece of software to the next and can be a little slow. On the other hand, virtual reality software this is game software. I mean even the stuff made for scene creation fundamentally it's it's a it's gaming software. So um, we had a bit of a disconnect that, that I was seeing in terms of what we wanted to develop to really be able to do some high-vis uh, science visualization in virtual reality with easy tools um, that were uh, kind of general purpose covering lots of areas as opposed to specialized tools for specific things. Um, with Unity as opposed to say Unreal or something else, 
we, in addition to having uh, a very large user base and great documentation, uh, the support in Unity for C Sharp scripting to be able to really customize and move away from gaming and scene creation to customizing uh, what we want to do to include uh, numerical modeling, to include uh, creation of objects on the fly based on data, that it gave us some features for that, that that we found it was the best choice for this. So in terms of what the UVT is providing, the Unity Visualization Toolkit is providing, uh, at least as of right now, and this is an ongoing project and things that we're looking to build, uh, what we've built up over the last couple of years is tools to allow for easy creation of, of surface plots, different types of, of glyph plots, and by glyph plots, and I'll show examples. I mean, you know, individual things with unstructured data scattered about in 3D. Um, we've looked at, you know, and, and we've implemented ability to do kind of 3D scatter plots, quiver plots, bar plots, and to build in some animation on these. Um, in addition, we've been looking at kind of how do we have tools to make easy visualization of, you know, f of x, y, and z within a Unity scene uh, for thresholds, uh, volumetric plots, and, and ISOR contour plots. And just to kind of show a few examples, and I'll show this. So right now we're actually running inside of an application um, built with the UVT uh, in Unity. So we're running in a Unity app right now. Uh, and I've got it set up, we can see our slides here. Um, so again, traditional thing would be, you know, you know, can we look at, say, for example, surface data, f of x and y, uh, and potentially something that's uh, animated as well with different uh, uh, abilities to use color to also kind of understand things. And we have, while this is shown here, again, we're seeing it here in video as, as what we would call 2.5D. Um, perspective, but not stereo, not the sort of thing where it comes out of the screen at you. Um, but because we're building it in Unity, and because the ability in Unity to go from 2.5D to a true 3D experience, an immersive experience using an Oculus headset or something of that sort, uh, is really just a configuration uh, in, the, in the compile settings. Um, uh, if, if we were doing our online presentation, I'd have a couple of headsets and everyone could put one on and we'd play with it. But uh, 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 since we're since we're online and virtual, I don't have as many of those demos for you. But but it's it's it again it's, for us it's a very seamless uh, progression. So when we talk about uh, glyph plots, the ability to kind of again in a general purpose way take someone's x y z data and other variables at x y and z. Maybe in this case, if we're looking at say an embody simulation, maybe we've got velocity, maybe we've got uh, stellar brightness, maybe we've got mass, maybe we've got something else. And we can kind of take all of that and build it into different ways the data is going to view and navigate through it, um, again, in, in a virtual scene with perspective. And so for the, the glyph plot tools that we've created, the idea is that we've got general purpose of ways of building from text data files, um, uh, standard glyph sets. Um, this is a very small example one, but Quiver plots, the idea of you have vector data that you could have um, arrows pointing in some direction at different spaces in X, Y, and Z. If you wanted to look at uh, you know, velocity of wind at different latitudes, longitudes, and elevations, or, or anything like that, that you have vector data in X, Y, and Z space, uh, as well as um, the ability to do uh, uh, bar plots as well. Um, I'm actually going to talk about this particular plot a lot a little bit later when I start talking about uh, some things that have been created. This particular visualization is one that came out of our, our high school experience. But in terms of feature sets, this is kind of what we've been wanting to build uh, as of right now into our glyph plots is you know, to build from data sets, 3D scatter plots, uh, 3D animations with points, 3D animations with quivers, or 3D bars. The other glyph set feature we've been working on on having features for people to visualize in Unity are uh, molecular renderings. We're still working on adding in things like uh, uh, more advanced cartoon style uh, drawings that you would have, say, for a, a larger molecule, something that you might have access to in, in um, Gromax or, or 
sorry, I should say, uh, that's a simulation tool, not a visualization tool. Uh, something that you might have in, say, um, um, uh, uh, any of the other kind of standard tools that we would think of for visualizing uh, large molecules. I'm having a, I'm having a, a, my tongue won't work today uh, in terms of saying the name of the tool I wanted to say. But at any rate, we're, we're, you know, we've looked at kind of making sure that you have the ability, at least for simple molecules, to be able to just from standard molecule files, load them up, bring them up, and you have them in the scene. So our, our glyph set features includes connections and molecules, and we could easily extend this to things like networks in 3D as well. Um, and then in addition to surfaces, which are really fundamentally 2D objects that we might use perspective to see them differently, glyph plots, which allow us to look at things that exist and are understood where here is something that exists at position X, Y, and Z. Um, we also want to have ways of looking at a function of F of X, Y, and Z, uh, which is a little bit harder because now we're not talking about uh, either something that exists in 3D space or something that's two-dimensional where we're using a third dimension to get some extra insight. But now we're talking about something that varies in 3D. So in a sense, we're looking at a, a in a sense of uh, almost four-dimensional, not in a sense of, of necessarily four spatial dimensions, but three independent variables to one dependent variable. Uh, how do we kind of visualize f of x, y, and z? And standard tools for doing this would be, uh, one would be what's called a threshold. Basically, everywhere in space where the function is above or below some value, we color that in, um, and everywhere else we leave it empty. Um, or we might make what's called an ISO contour, where we try to build a region in space where f of x, y, and z is equal to some value, zero or four, or two times 10 to the negative 33rd, right? Some value, right? So our ISO contour plot is to take our f of x, y, and z, set it to some value, and see what sort of shape that makes, right? Um, if, if our function were just a simple plane, we would get a plane in space. If we were looking at um, if we're looking at something like uh, uh, a sphere, we could have, say, for example, uh, we could look at isocontours of e to the minus x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which would be concentric spheres uh, working outward. And then finally, in terms of uh, tools to build from data um, different 3D visualizations, f of x, y, and z, we have a shader-based uh, volumetric renderer in the UVT to allow you to essentially take your function of f of x, y, and z, and I like to think of this as turning it into a, a fog uh, where you have uh, light being emitted and absorbed uh, in that space, and that creates the thing that you see. So um, in terms of the, the fundamental features of our, of our UVT that we wanted to kind of initially start with, this idea of you know, f of x and y extended into a third dimension, things that exist in x, y, and z space, and functions of f of x, y, and z visualized as thresholds, volumetric plots, and isocontra plots, all of which can be built easily within a scene by essentially dragging and dropping elements into your scene. And I'll, um, time permitting, we'll see. I might be able to skip out of the, the program that I've seen that I've created in Unity and show you kind of what that looks like in, in a little bit. Um, so where do we want to go with this next? What are the next tools that we expect to have in the Unity Visualization Toolkit available for, for people to use? Uh, one of the projects we're working on right now uh, involves looking at how do we handle, say, layered images. Uh, in particular, this is a project related to uh, some data we're analyzing from a confocal microscope of different stem cells, uh, and, uh, fruit fly stem cells to be specific. Uh, but this could also apply to things like MRI, CAT scans, things like that. A lot of the things where we have kind of layered images, we want to have a nice way um, to, to quickly build up virtual reality scenes from those in kind of a uniform sense that applies across lots of different types of data. Um, we've also been working on, and we've got some prototype stuff working with more irregular grids uh, and things where, let's say, particularly for building surfaces and seat maps from irregular grids. And of course, we want to make everything more efficient. We want to support more file formats. We want to have more of our aspects within the UVT that can handle animation. 
Um, and and our, our kind of long-term goal of this, um, uh, as, as, an old, as an old school gamer myself, and I always loved uh, World of Warcraft, I'm not going to lie, this was my inspiration for kind of uh, thinking about a lot of this next step and where I want to go with this. Um, one of the things I would love to see us do is think about this idea of um, multi-user environments and virtual reality environments, that we ought to be able to use this in the same way that we're using, um, if we use Zoom or BlueJeans or WebEx to, to be able to share ideas with each other in a group, we ought to be able to have a 3D data space that people can log into and work on data together. And that's uh, a, a long-term goal of this. And why we're building a lot of these tools is to build an environment that will really let us to work on and visualize 3D data together. Um, but that's still definitely a, a future direction piece for this. So if you say, that sounds really cool, I've got some 3D data, or I've got a student that's been working in Unity, or I want to do something with visualization inside of a Unity game engine scene, uh, where is this? Uh, the most recent stable release is at uh, GitHub. Um, and if you were to Google GitHub and Unity Visualization Toolkit, that would probably get you there. Um, so all of this, again, is available under an open source license. Uh, free, to, free to use it. Um, let us know you're using it, if you are. Um, I, but uh, uh, license information, everything as well is on the, on the GitHub site. So, uh, but, uh, so the tools that have been released are all there. So the other kind of piece that I wanted to talk about, in addition to the tools we created, the, the, the educational technology pieces, here's this library of Unity assets we, we've been building for our purposes. And if you want to use them, that's great. Here are some things they do. Um, is how are we working it in to our program here? What's the technology education piece? So um, we are doing this in the context of a program training students in computational science. So scientific visualization in and of itself is already something we're interested in and want students thinking about. And all of those students need to learn programming. And um, so we're always looking for good, authentic, uh, high impact educational experiences that'll get our students involved in doing things with programming other than a lot of the you know, standard textbook examples. Um, from an undergraduate perspective, we've been doing this in the context of what we're calling our Research First Initiative Program. It's freshman and sophomore research intensive experience. The students take six credits over three semesters. Um, the first course is just a discussion style class that all of our incoming freshmen in our program take where they learn about research methods and, and, and uh, discuss ideas and do some writing and, and literature review. The second course is a two credit course where it's an introduction to a research steam stream. Uh, I'm just wrapping up uh, uh, one of these classes right now. Um, and what my students have been working in is the basics of learning to use the Unity game engine. Um, so we've done a lot of example projects, tutorials, and it's a small group experience, six to eight students with one faculty member. Uh, and then that moves on to a three credit research project. Uh, and again, each of these over one semester where, uh, and I'll show you the results of uh, what some of my students did last semester at this more advanced level, where those same six to eight students who have taken the, the introduction go on and then use those skills in a, more, in a more directed experience. And so what we've been trying to do is have these students use this as an opportunity to learn some programming, get an advanced thought about data visualization, get started in a high impact learning experience early on in their freshman and sophomore semesters, but also help us to build out the, the unit visualization toolkit. So um, in terms of some of the different things we've been building, um, one of the ones I really want to focus on today is this confocal microscope data viewer. This is something that's a collaboration with another faculty member in our department uh, who came to me one day and said, I've got this data. Can your group help me visualize it? It's been a, a, a rewarding experience to do that. Uh, we've had a number of other projects as, as well uh, that have come through this RFI group, including a student right now who's working to extend some educational software tools for looking at groundwater modeling where the tools already exist in 2D and we're looking to extend it into 3D and use virtual reality tools to view it. 
Um, similarly, I have another student who's been working through this project with taking a, uh, um, an open source tool for looking at uh, gravitational and body simulations and looking at how can we update that software and bring in virtual reality for that as well. But the confocal microscope is, is the one I really want to kind of bring out and talk a little bit more about. So as, as, as I'd said, this was a project where another faculty member uh, in our department who was needing to handle data analysis with fruit fly stem cells viewed through a confocal microscope with assorted different treatments um, where the stem cells were stained and viewed and looked at and the way the confocal microscope worked, what he got was essentially a bunch of sliced images. One image is layered over on top of the other um, that he needed to be able to do analysis on and do reconstruction with. The software he was using for this uh, was not open source, a little on the pricey side. And so he was looking at what could we do to, to not just bring in the VR and not just give the students experience, but also quite frankly, to build a tool that we could make as a, as a again, an open source uh, uh, tool to be used in this particular community. So this is the raw data we had. And um, the students I was working with, we had an idea with this that we can load the data directly into the tools we already have in the UVT, but we thought about extending it as well and saying, you know what, how fast could we have something online for this, for this uh, other person if we just brought the images into Unity, displaced them a little bit, took the background color, made it transparent, and optimize the shader a little. Uh, and we managed actually within a couple of weeks um, to uh, have kind of the start of this tool that uh, this faculty member was using to do his cell analysis, where we went from, um, again, 40 or 50 flat images of slices of cells taken with this confocal microscope to a virtual reality rendering that the faculty member could then walk through and look at and look inside of. Um, to, to view how the data rendered in 3D. Uh, and this is one of the pieces that we want to be able to add to the next stable release of UVT is this ability to, to work with these layered images and in, increase the number of, of ways in which we're using them. And uh, certainly that's where my current student research team is looking to go into next is how do we extend this and uh, allow them to do some things like uh, go in and erase things on the way and count the cells and, and all of this. Hey, we all look really silly walking around with VR headsets when we do this, but you know, um, but it was an ability to kind of get this tool into this uh, faculty member's hands. All work being done by freshmen and sophomores, uh, really just getting, getting that first programming experience. So our other experience we've been working on in terms of uh, having technology education and educational technology is working to kind of promote this down at the high school level. And there's going to be a couple of different programs I want to point out here that we've, that we've been doing. The first is what we call our Group Summer Scholars Research Program. This is a, an intensive research experience for high school sophomores, juniors, seniors, um, where we bring in, again, six to ten students on a team, uh, we have a couple of our undergrads help and one tenured or tenure track faculty member uh, leading the group. It's six weeks over the summer, four days a week, uh, non-residential, just a day camp. Uh, but the students are there all day and they start working on different projects. And we're doing this in multiple disciplines. But the students working with me have been saying, okay, let's look at the Unity Visualization Toolkit. Let's think about different things we can visualize. Let's test it. Let's see if we can make it more efficient. Let's see if we can break it and figure out what needs to be fixed. Or let's come up with new ideas that you haven't thought of yet, different types of visualizations we can't build with this. Um, so some of the things we've been doing with this, um, and I want to, I'm going to bring out a couple of these examples. Um, one of the first uh, examples that we did with this was a student who was very interested in saying, what could we do with geotagged data and really looking at um, what's going to happen if we if we start looking at things that we know at different latitudes and latitudes, latitudes and latitude, latitudes and longitudes, sorry, a little tongue tied today, um, to, to really get some data out of that. And so, not that one yet, not that one yet, that one. So uh, for that project, we started looking at tax data. 
and we wanted to kind of understand and think about different ways of visualizing income tax data. The student went and grabbed uh, from the IRS for the year 2016 um, the summaries of every zip code in the U.S. of the number of tax returns filed uh, broken down by uh, different tax brackets. And so we started saying, well, what could we get out of this? And this particular visualization uh, that the student built, um, we got a couple of things out of it. One was this sense of thinking about geotagging data and how is it going to be different. But we also realized we wanted to think about uh, kind of, you know, the student said, you know, hey, right now you can do these, uh, you know, spheres or arrows, but what about bar plots? Can we have bar plots rising from the ground at different heights? We added that and made that a feature of the UVT, and that came out of this. Um, but the particular thing we're looking at here is each of these bars is a zip code, and we've cut down so that it's not every zip code in the U.S. for the visualization, just for frame rate purposes. Uh, so it's randomly sampled from this, but it's about 10% of the zip codes in the U.S. Um, and the height of each bar is the ratio of um, top tax bracket returns to bottom tax records returns. And it's normalized basically to make the scale tall so we can see it. So uh, tall doesn't necessarily mean there's a ton of, you know, top tax bracket returns. It just means there's more tax bracket returns per bottom tax bracket returns compared to the lower bars. Uh, but the scale is taller is essentially income skewed more towards higher income earners. And then green versus red is population. So that the red bars were um, low population density uh, zip codes and the green bars were high population density. Sorry, the tall, the green bars are high population density zip codes. So green is higher population density, taller is more skewed towards higher income. And we started getting a lot of kind of visual things out of this that, that you know, again, we were really surprised to see. And I thought this was a really interesting way to view this data. But it was, again, I think a really good experience for that student to, to do this and build the scene and think about the whole data processing pipeline. How did they get the data? How did they clean the data? How did they get the data into a, you know, comma-separated value file format so that we can load it into the UVT? What did we need to do in the scene to, to set it up and compile it? Uh, and some extra things that we had for that particular visualization as well. But kind of that data, so this was a great project for the student in terms of the data processing pipeline, I felt. Um, another example, again, of a uh, student-created tool. This was a case where um, student work led to features in the UVT that we didn't have before the high school students started working on it. Um, and this is kind of this idea of our threshold plots. Uh, at the time that this student came on board, we had our isocontra ISO plots in place. Um, we had the volumetric renderings, though another student came by later and helped us to improve the shader and make it better. Um, but we didn't have our kind of fundamental threshold plot. We were looking at ways of doing it and doing it efficiently. Uh, and so a high school student built a uh, recursive octree data structure to go through, descend through, decide how to break up a uh, structured or unstructured data set and make it fill space according to three independent variables and color it according to, you know, different ranges of values. Uh, this was, again, another project driven by another faculty member in our department who said, you know, I've been running these models and I can change this parameter, I can change this parameter, I can change a third parameter. I'm really just having trouble, you know, I've got all of these 2D plots and I need to just see it all at once. Could you build us something that'll do that? So uh, we built this tool. We said, you know, it looks kind of cool. And then the faculty member who we were working with came in and said, everything makes sense now. This is so great. You know, thank you. Um, but this was a, a great example to me of how uh, ideas that came out of uh, our high school research experience led to, hey, maybe we could extend this in this way. And we got uh, some, some real kind of developmental work uh, out, of, out of a high school experience. Um, and again, some, some, some other things as well. And the last one I really want to kind of pull from the high school experience is um, uh, an example of something that we did specifically with uh, a group from a local high school uh, that, had, uh, that had been coming in over multiple years as part of a computer science club to try to think, what can we do with programming besides just programming? And um, I have to find it. 
Next, next, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one, this one, okay. And let me fly to where I am in the scene. Um, those of you wondering uh, just how nauseous I'm going to make you with all my flying through, you do know it really is running in 3D now, at least. Um, so uh, a group from a, again, a local high school where we started looking at different optimization methods. Um, from the standpoint of the Unity Visualization Toolkit, this led to some, uh, some abstract methods of thinking about how to take simulations inside of a Unity scene, run the simulations, run the calculations in real time as we go, where the students were looking at issues of uh, simulated annealing optimizations. And so we, you know, so here's an example of a simulated annealing optimization built around this high school uh, group's experience, um, where what came out of it was, was our tools for runtime simulation within our Unity scene that can be built in in different C-sharp scripts and then tied to some of our visualizations. Uh, and our visualization here is being done with a glyph set, uh, which rather than being pulled from a data file is being pulled to simulation results right at the same time. And all of these kind of features of the UVT that came out of this experience. Um, so from the standpoint of our experiences with uh, technology education with Unity. Um, in addition to what I've said here, a lot of this can be found on a blog that I run, uh, also on my GitHub site. Uh, and if you go to joinerda.github.io, uh, you'll find uh, a number of blog examples with worked examples starting from a either an empty Unity scene building up different ideas of how to use Unity for science and science visualization, or starting from an empty Unity scene and the Unity Visualization Toolkit uh, ideas on how to do kind of certain visualizations and, and work it into class curriculum. Um, so I will uh, leave it there uh, in terms of the uh, talk for today. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions, uh, either either uh, either either in online on June first or or in any other way that the uh, conference organizers managed to come up with for sharing our virtual experience. Thank you.